Hello, hello, Rolla skaters. What's up? I'm Booty Quake, and I'm one of the co-founders here at Rolla Skate Club. And today we're gonna talk about the top five moves you can do in your skates or in your shoes to get stronger on your roller skates quickly so you can kick more ass out there on your wheels. Are you ready? Let's do this. So this issue is pretty near and dear to my heart. Um, those of you who maybe know me from a little bit um, earlier in my career in the roller skating world uh, know me from my previous business, which was called Roller Derby Athletics. So I built off-skate training programs for roller derby athletes to help them kick more ass on the track. Okay, so I have a personal training um, certificate and I come from, you know, my brother was a professional hockey player. Um, my parents met at a track meet when they were in high school. How cute is that? And um, I played a lot of sports. I played, um, I did rowing or as Americans call it, crew at a division one university in the States. Um, so, and I did a lot of dance as a kid as well. So very kind of physically active and I've been trained and I've learned through doing. I'm a, CrossFit level one certified coach. So um, I know some things about training your body to be strong. And I really, really fundamentally believe that if you build some strong muscles, that you will find your roller skating skills will just like expand like crazy. Okay, it'll just happen so much faster if your foundations are built. Here we are, let's do it. We're gonna talk about our top five moves that you can do. So if you are newer or more tentative to roller skating, then I would recommend at least the first couple of times you do this, just go ahead and try to do these things in your shoes. All right, you will still get a really good workout. Next, you can grab a chair to support you or you can do it next to a wall for a little bit of support because some of the things we're gonna be doing are gonna require a little bit of balance and I don't want you to biff it while you're trying to be a good soldier and work on your, um, your strong muscles and doing like, kind of like eating your Wheaties here. You shouldn't um, fall on your face while you're doing like the, the practice stuff. So um, let's just make sure that we're safe and we're in our comfort zone and we're gonna do some stuff to feel strong. Okay, to probably no one's surprise, my first skill that I'm gonna give you is a squat. And I can talk about squats for a long time. Are you ready? Begin. Here we go. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I can talk about squats for a really long time, but I'm going to talk about them for just a medium amount of time. So if you're in your skates, join me here with your feet hip width apart. If you're in your shoes, same thing. Okay, so I'm just hip width apart here. Now I want you to think about your outside edges of your skates, okay? So your outside edges is these outer wheels that are under your pinky toe side, yeah? Okay, and I want you to drive those into the floor. So if you're in your skates, think about those outside edges. Think about being able to lift up your inside edges and sit down, okay? And normally when we squat, when, when, we, when we sink down, when we're skating in our roller skates, we wanna have our knees forward over our toes. But if we wanna practice a squat for strength, then we have to be careful about it, but we kind of want to hang our butt back a little bit and have our shins a little bit more vertical. So that's the difference between here with our knees forward and here with our butt back, yeah? So for the purpose of practicing our squats, we want the butt back version. You with me? Okay, so we're gonna stand up nice and tall. We're gonna rotate our hips out in our hip sockets using our side butt cheek muscles here. We're going to press out into the outer edges of our feet or our skates. We're going to put our arms out in front of us for counterbalance. We're gonna send our butt back and down and up and down and up. So again, if you're trying this on skates and you're a little bit newer to roller skating, feel free to have a high back chair, something that you don't have to reach, lean over to grab to, um, to just have for balance, or you can do this next to your kitchen counter, or you can do this next to a wall for support. Okay, so those are my squats. Now I'm gonna give you a front view, and I'm gonna show you something really important. So when we're thinking about those outer edges, we want our kneecaps to kind of track out. So we wanna be a little bow-legged, like there's a watermelon in here that we're not gonna let it hit the ground. 
We do a lot of watermelon analogies with our legs and knees crushing watermelons here at Roller Skate Club. So this time I just want you to gently hold a roller, uh, <laughs> I want you to gently hold a watermelon between your knees and you're going to sink down and you're going to have that feeling of the outer edges of your skates being, having the most pressure and coming up. So what I don't want to see is these knees caving in. You see the difference? So this is a no and this is a yes. All right, that was easy, right? That was our first exercise, we already got it done. Squats, number one exercise to help you be stronger on your roller skates. You probably already know this, but everything you do on your roller skates becomes easier and more powerful and more, more, more everything if you have more leverage to do the skill and that means getting down and getting low, okay? So if I want to skate quickly and turn quickly, if I'm upright like this and I try to turn, I'm not gonna turn very quickly. But if I can get low, then I can turn really quickly because I have more leverage. So being able to get low is super important for your skating skills and for your balance on skates. So we need to build that muscle memory and that muscle endurance that will allow us to spend a lot of time down here, okay? If you have any interest in going to the park and doing park skating, where you're jumping up on things or you're in the bowl pumping, you are gonna need to work on these squats so, 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 so much. And if you wanna do roller derby, then you're gonna spend your life down here, okay? So we need to build those up. So you can do sets. If you're not using any weight, you build yourself up to three sets of 20 air squats. Okay, that's a good number to, to target for that skill. Are we ready for number two? Let's do it. Okay, skill number two is going to be quite simple, maybe a little more challenging than it looks. We're just gonna balance on one foot, but we're gonna balance and hold it, okay? So when we do this, first things first, bring your feet close together under your junk, okay? I can't have you like this, because you're gonna to have to have too far to go to get up on one foot, and it's gonna make chaos and make things crazy. So bring your feet nice and close together. Again, remember, you can hold onto a wall here for support. Then you're going to sit, shift, and lift. Put that one down, come up again, shake it out, and you're gonna sit, shift, and lift just like that. Now, my whole body is working, okay? My core is engaged, my chin is up, I'm not looking down at those toes. My hip is working to stabilize me over here with my shift. My core, did I say core? My core is involved. And I'm in this nice little baby squat position, so my whole leg here is working. But most importantly for this little skill, my foot and my calf and all the stabilizing muscles in my lower leg here are working to hold me in place. And that's what we're looking for here. So if this is quite easy for you, then your next stage is gonna be to lift and hold, and hold for 30 seconds before you put that foot down. I can't have you doing this up here with a straight leg, okay? Because if anything happens, you don't have anywhere to go to um, catch your balance. Plus you're not working that nice big meat over here. So I wanna see you down in a low position with your chest forward to do your balances. And ideally, you don't have your hands on your hip, your head, your shoulders. We're not doing an I'm a little teapot. We're not touching our body with our hands at all, okay? Because that brings us to our third um, uh, progression of this skill, which is once you've got the sit, shift, and lift kind of dialed in and you can hold that for 30 seconds, maybe if you have to touch down once, that's fine. Now, you're gonna do it with your eyes closed. So if you're following along with me and you've got your roller skates on right now, I want you to do this, okay? We're going to sit, shift, lift, and close your eyes. All of a sudden, your equilibrium from your eyes and ears goes away because you don't have a horizon to work with anymore. And now your body has to work really hard to hold your balance. And the thing that's working super, super, super hard is your lower leg, okay? This is just as effective if you're doing it in your shoes, 
okay? Don't feel like you have to practice this in your roller skates if you're not comfortable doing that. You can absolutely 100%, get 100% of the value of this doing it in your shoes, all right? So try in your shoes and then progress your way to doing it in your roller skates so that you feel, you start to learn how your skates feel. So for these one foot balances, I mean, this is something you can do in your shoes or your skates while you're brushing your teeth at night, close your eyes and practice your balance. That's super great. I want you to shoot for at least 30 seconds per foot. Ideally, if you could work your way up to a minute at a time and repeat it two or three times throughout the day, so you've got like three minutes of balancing time, that would with that level of consistency, that would make a big difference and you'll find yourself able to balance more easily in your roller skates. Okay, that was exercise number two. Exercise number three. We're gonna do a slow knee tap. This is kind of like a lunge, uh, but because we've got the wheelie things on our feet, it's gonna be extra, extra challenging. If you have knee pads, you might want to wear them because we're going to touch our knee down to the ground and if you have any concern that you might not be able to control your descent completely you don't want to smash your little patella on the ground i think that's a great idea you should put on some knee pads okay and again a chair or a wall can be very helpful here for support as you get the hang of this you can do this in your shoes you'll see what i mean okay so if you're doing it in your shoes you're just going to be doing a lunge if we're in our roller skates watch me first That's what I'm up to, all right? And then I'm switching sides, lowering with control, and coming back up. So let me break this down because you could just do it and just try it and be like, huh, I don't know, seems okay, seems easy, whatever. Or I could give you all the juicy details and then you don't waste one single second doing one single knee tap that isn't like making the most of your time working out. All right, that's, I'm all about the efficiency, okay, and maximizing. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm putting my toe stop of my back foot down, okay? So this is anchoring me so I'm not rolling forward or backward. Then I'm putting my weight on this front foot. I am not clenching my butt, but I'm engaging my butt, okay? Both butt cheeks, core engaged, eyes up, and then I'm rolling forward, and I'm coming down on my toe of my back skate until my knee touches the ground. Then I'm using my butt cheeks to rise up and roll that foot back. Then I switch sides, I put the other toe stop down. I can do hands on hips, I can do arms out to the side, whatever I need for balance. And I'm rolling down and coming back up. All right, so if you're following along with me, let's keep going, let's try a few. Nice down and up. And remember, you're using your butt muscles to rise up out of that position, okay? You can see how if you're just in your shoes, you're doing some slow lunges. This is doing a very similar thing. Yeah. All right, so this is hard work. Lunges are not easy, and we're going really low, so we're getting right down to the ground. So you're gonna feel this working. My one most important thing that I want to see slash not see from you when you're doing these is, remember when I talked about your outside edges with the squats? I want your front knee to be hanging out over that outside edge of your skate or your foot, okay? So here's the don't. I do not want to see this knee caving in and coming across the center line like this. I wanna see this knee bow-legged, imaginary watermelon, hitting it out to the side over those outside edges. Yeah? Let's try that on the other side. Going down, keeping that knee out over the outside edges, keeping the butt muscles engaged, constantly keeping that knee tracking in a nice line that's over my fourth and my fifth toe. That's our knee taps, slow knee taps. So, you can practice your slow knee taps for eight to 10 each side. So it's gonna be 16 to 20 reps alternating. And then you can do like three sets of that. And that would be awesome. 
It's time for our fourth exercise. We are going to do a side lunge, AKA a transfer of weight, which is important for our roller skating because all of our roller skating skills kind of start from a transfer of weight from one side to the other, fun fact. Um, and we're gonna add a little leg lift. So I don't love to do things that are very 1980s aerobics-y, but this one is really gonna help us. So we're gonna get down in a wide stance. My feet are wider than my shoulders, yeah? If you are new to this, cheat it a little bit narrower. If you are quite a strong skater and your balance is really comfortable, then you can go a little wider. So we're right in the middle here. Our core is engaged. You're gonna put your hands on your hips. You're going to shift your weight over. Once again, the knee is out over the baby toe. My chest is up, my core is engaged, and I'm gonna shift my weight all the way and lift my skate off the floor. I can even do two or three here and then I'm gonna come back to the middle. I'm low, I'm gonna stay low, I'm gonna go to the other side. Knee out over the outside edge, core engaged. Get your balance there and lift and lift. Okay, so we're wearing our roller skates so we have like a, um, a little uh, ankle weight happening here. Totally fine to do this one in your shoes, over, lift, and you'll, you should feel this side butt muscle working to do, make that side lift. So when you do the side lift, you wanna keep um, the side of your foot, those two wheels there, or the side of your running shoe uh, facing towards the ceiling, okay? So I don't want you to open up your foot like this. I want you to keep that toe pointing forward, um, side of your shoe or skate facing the ceiling. All right, so let's do a few here. When you shift, I want you to think about a vertical line through your nose and your belly button and your junk that comes over and points right over your shoelaces, okay? So what we're not looking for is an, I call it the I'm a little teapot, like the, the tilt and then the lift. Okay, I'm really looking for the whole vertical line to come over and then I'm lifting, lifting, back to center, over, lift lift, okay? And when you come over, kind of like our squats, your butt's gonna be hanging out the back a little bit. So not so much like knee forward, but more ass back, all right? Show you from the other side, and then lift and lift. So this is, you are super, super gonna feel this in your side butt muscles, your gluteus medius, and I want you to try to do that exercise both sides, 10 times each side, or 20 times alternating. And again, you can work up to three sets of that. Okay, we're on to our very last exercise. And this exercise is push-ups. And you're probably not excited to hear that because a lot of women, unfortunately, have not really developed their upper body. It's harder for people. It doesn't come naturally in our day-to-day. -day, and so we're a little afraid of push-ups. But I'm gonna make this work for you. So first step is I want you to take off your wrist guards, okay? Because I don't want your wrist guards to slide on the floor and mess with you, okay? You can uh, injure your shoulders that way. So take your wrist guards off so you've got a nice firm hand plant on the ground. I'm gonna pause here and say, why do we need to do our push-ups, my friends? Okay, so first of all, if we fall on our butts and we land on the ground, we need to be able to have the strength to push ourselves back up again. If you plan on going to the park, how are you gonna get your butt out of the bowl if you can't push yourself up on that edge and crawl yourself out and do the seal flip over the side? We need to have our upper body strength. Plus, doing all these exercises we've done before, these first four, you're gonna have like all this beautiful booty ass leg meat here, and I can't have you having like T-Rex arms, okay? We gotta balance ourselves out, okay? So, we're gonna do some push-ups, ready? Let's get down there. All right, do not be afraid, my friend. We're gonna do some good push-ups, all right? So if you are a little afraid of push-ups, you can put your knees down like this, right? Put your knees down to the ground. Just try not to have your butt up in the air. Try to make a straight line from your knees to your shoulders. And then let your elbows come out towards your ribs. And I want your elbows to come out at like a 45 degree angle. Not like this, okay? Some people try to do some weird stuff here with their arms out at 90 degrees. Just have them here like this, just kind of a natural 
pushing motion as if you were like pushing open a door, okay? If you can go up on your toes, go ahead on up into your um, toe stoppers and lower yourself down and push up and down and push up. Now, there's so many ways you can progress this, but you can start, if, if knee push-ups are too challenging, you can start with your feet on a step or a bench. I love this, I do this all the time, especially to warm up to doing full push-ups. So you just elevate your hands, then you're in a full plank position just with your hands up high, and then you can practice and warm up and improve at your push-ups. Next step would be, um, before that, if that's still too challenging for you, is a countertop or a wall. Just put your hands on that countertop, move your feet further away, and then you can push down and push up. And you can practice, gradually lower your hands closer to the floor, and that's how you're gonna be able to build up your push-up strength. One more little tip I have for building up your push-up strength is you can challenge yourself by lowering yourself slowly to the ground, and then put down your knees one knee or two knees and push yourself up and then back to a full push up. So you can work on just doing the descent, the full out, and then you can graduate yourself coming back up. All right, my friends, are you feeling strong and powerful? You beautiful Rolla humans out there. Don't worry if you felt like this was super challenging to start out with. This is stuff that takes time and consistency and practice to start to feel easier. But trust me, trust me, trust me. If you practice and you do these moves, you will feel stronger in your skates really soon. I promise you with everything I've got. So if you are looking for more tips and more ways to learn how to do more skills more easily on your roller skates, then absolutely come check us out at rollerskateclub.com and online.rollerskateclub.com and check us out on Instagram too, at rollerskateclub. Uh, I totally wanna hear from you and hear what you thought about this video. Any questions you have, throw them in the comments or um, message us, contact us, hello at rollerskateclub.com and I can't wait to see how strong and powerful you become doing these top five moves to kick ass on roller skates. Bye skaters! <laughs>